Oh my god. This laptop here with the 5600 beat this desktop 5600 XT, by the way. 36 compute units versus 40 on this one, but this is 150 watts. This is 50 watts. 150 watts versus 50 watts. Wow, wow, wow. And it doesn't stop there. Are the pros going to dump the Mac now? Well, let's discuss because right here I have the new MacBook Pro 16 with the 5600 graphics and yeah, this is now a legacy product. Yeah, 5600, that's what this is. Actually better than that. It's more like a 5700, but yes, this is literally a legacy product now. So I'm just going to talk about Apple's Mac announcements basically. Um, while I unbox this and stay tuned for this, make sure you subscribe because, yeah, I'm going to be testing this compared to the XPS 15 in gaming, etc. So, and content creation, of course. So, anyway, let's unbox it and let's have a talk. So, this is indeed a legacy product now, unfortunately. Yes, within two years, Intel, bye bye. The transition to ARM will be done in two years' time. And by the way, Mac OS 11 is it now? Thank you for naming it after me, Big Sir, because that's what all the ladies called me, Big Sir, even the guys too, you know. In Australia, you're not a man till you had a man. They all call me Big Sir, and yes, that is an awesome name. And actually, watching the keynote, what did you think of the keynote? When they actually started demonstrating stuff in Safari, I just lost it. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? They're showing us how to use a browser? No hardware, come on. So anyway, I was around for the last transition from... Um, PC, Power PC to Intel. And I was very excited for that because we were gonna get much better CPUs, we're gonna have better performance and everything like that. But it's not like that anymore because you have gotta remember, that was around 206, wasn't it? And I did buy the first Intel iMac, I bought the first Intel MacBook and the first Intel Mac Pro. They were all awesome products. But back then, Mac was king, right? Now, I feel like the Mac's sort of like Oh, let's make it more like an iPad. It's just, I don't, it's not for me. I don't want my Mac OS to look like an iPad. I don't want anything. I don't like the iPad. The iPad for me is a useless piece of equipment when most of the stuff I can do on my iPad, I can do on my phone. But anyway, so this looks like a normal Mac. There's nothing to see here. But on the positive side of these announcements, what they've done is they've done it the right way. Unlike Microsoft who actually run ARM hardware, but run it in x86 in emulation, they've done it the right way. They've gone full native with ARM. It's not running in emulation. Some of the apps, you know, the existing apps will have to run in emulation, but they already have some apps actually running native, which was a bit of propaganda when you think about it. Okay, I'll just get this out of the way. So what I mean by propaganda was, you know, the apps they show and running natively, I mean, they have their own pro apps native, which you would expect. I mean, they've been working on this for a while. And if they have, you know, an ARM version of Mac OS, obviously they've got the apps. I mean, they've been doing this for years. So that wasn't a surprise to me. But they had Photoshop, Lightroom and Word or whatever office running. And it's like, you know, who are you trying to fool? Those apps were already on iOS anyway for the iPad and even iPhone, I think, as well. So... You know, they only had to do a few tweaks, didn't they? So to have those apps running natively was no big deal. But here's the thing. Would you invest in a Mac Pro now? I was thinking of getting a new iMac if it was going to come out. There was supposed to be 10th generation, new redesigned iMac. But I'm thinking, why would I do that now? Why would I buy into a legacy product where you know 100% Apple? If people transition to ARM they will drop Intel as quick as they can. Like, you know, it'll be just deprecated, left there, no performance upgrades. They'll do the bare minimum, you know, security updates, just whatever, but no performance enhancements, nothing like that. It will just be deprecated. All Intel systems, they will work. And if all these apps have moved to ARM, the apps will be deprecated too. They won't enhance those anymore. Of course, they'll work, but they won't be enhanced. I'm thinking, why would I buy an Intel Mac now? And should I wait for an ARM one? It's like, no, I wouldn't buy actually both at the moment because you could get screwed both ways. Let's pretend you buy an ARM one, you wait for the ARM one, you buy the ARM one. What if all these developers don't move apps over to ARM and then you have to run an emulation? Like, you can't professionally use emulated apps. It's just not tenable. It has to be running natively. And you think about it, you know, 
DaVinci Resolve, Bass Light, Pro Tools, Avid Media Composer, Ableton, you know, Premiere Pro. There's so many apps that have to be on ARM before I'd even consider getting an ARM. And it would have to show me that the performance is better too. But then if you bought an Intel system, just pretend that all those apps, they pulled it over to ARM straight away. Well, Intel would ditch this. As I said before, they'll deprecate it and all those apps will be deprecated. The current apps that run on this now, they'll be deprecated. All the development will be going forward with the ARM and this will just be deprecated. And even the apps, they'll still run, but all the development will be going into the ARM edition. So you're screwed whichever way you go, possibly. So... And just looking at the demo, when they demoed Maya that was running in emulation, that looked a bit choppy. And just running in emulation is not, you know, you can do it for a while, but you have to be running natively to get the best performance and you're not going to be doing anything professionally in emulation using Rosetta or whatever. One thing that was left out that's slightly concerning to me is X amount faster. They never said anything. They just said, oh, it's going to be so much better. The technology is going to be faster. They had some genius on there. Oh, I swear to God, he put up a chart and he said, oh, we want to go to the top left hand. We want to use less power and have more performance. It's like a da. Every chip maker wants to do that. I mean, he probably didn't write that script to be fair to him, but you know, there's no chip maker that goes, oh, I want to use more power and have less performance. So it was slightly concerning to me that they didn't actually have like, oh, it's going to be this much faster and look in Final Cut how much faster it is using the ARM processor compared to the other Mac. And, and also, what did they say? It was like four streams of ProRes 4K. And they're like, oh, look at that, four streams. I, I'm pretty sure the Mac... MacBook Pro 16 does 11 streams, isn't it? Something like that. Until I see the performance, until I see everybody port their apps over to ARM, I'm not going to touch an ARM. I'll probably buy one. Just It's going to be great for web surfing. I've got to tell you now, the ARM Mac is going to be great, like the 13-inch one, the MacBook Pro one. Like, it will perform better than the MacBook Pro we currently have because, you know, it's going to have a good GPU on it. It's going to be accelerated with metal and stuff like that. And the MacBook Pro 13 doesn't have a really good GPU, right? So, you know, if Final Cut runs well on the ARM MacBook Pro 13, which or 14 should replace the 13, yeah, I think that'll be good. But whether it'll perform better than this, we're talking, you know, the eight cores and, you know, 5,600 in this, like a beast 50 watt sort of, you know, GPU with 40 compute units. That's the big deal about this, 40 compute units, okay? compared to 24 compute units. This is probably the biggest upgrade that this MacBook Pro 16 has had definitely since going from four cores to six cores, and this is gonna make a huge difference in performance. Like, you're going from 24 compute units to 40, and eight gigabytes of HBM memory. So, that is amazing. We've got an update already, do we? Okay. And even this one here, I think this is 36 compute units and this is a 5,600 and we'll just run a um, Luxmark and we'll actually see how it compares to this. And I'll put it in the Hackintosh over there and I'll put a 5,700 in the Hackintosh and a Radeon 7. We'll see how this compares to it. But will they be able to make an arm, you know, this powerful? What's got me very intrigued is how are they going to beat the Mac Pro, like in arm processors? What's going to happen to Thunderbolt 3? We're going to just go to USB 4 now or... Yeah, there's a whole lot of things we've got to go through here. Is these GPUs dead? Is boot camps dead? Is Hackintosh dead? Um, you can run iPad and iPhone apps on this. Yeah, whatever. But anyway, I'm going to get stuck into this. Make sure you subscribe. I'm going to see how it performs compared to the XPS 15. Yeah, I'm very interested in what's going to happen. Will pros dump the Mac? If the developers don't get on board, I think they will dump the Mac. That's what I reckon. None of us have a crystal ball, only time will tell. This is nearly twice as fast as this one. This is the 5,508 gigabytes. This is the 5,600, right? This one is just about twice as fast. But that's not all. Let's run this again. Let's run this test again. I'll run it here. You won't believe this. Ash, oh, you can imagine how big his uh, solid state's gonna get when he finds out this. 